Hi, welcome to Shop Talk for Wednesday, April 17th. Yes, it's April 17th already. We do Shop Talk here at Chantel's 141 every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And if you're here live, welcome. If you are watching on the replay, welcome as well. This is um, a really casual evening of we're just going to sit and chat. And this is where Shop Talk is where I give updates for what's going on here in the shop, um, talking about things that are in in production, new items coming, sneak peeks, um, why new items aren't in the shop right now, that sort of thing. So we're going to get into it and talk about some of this. I also share my whips and finishes and things like that in Shop Talk because I have a separate thing that is a, a vlog style that just kind of is for fun. So, and I've got a vlog in the works as well. So that's coming soon. But hi guys. Hi. Welcome everybody. I didn't have a um, automatic like scheduled one. So I just came on at seven. So welcome. Welcome. How has everyone's week been? This has been just an interesting week here. And we haven't had a tornado warning today. Today was so I, I'm just today is the day as a day. Actually, the entire week. I don't know. It's been a very crazy week, but we're having a good time here. And I think, hi guys, I see April and um, Barbara and Lana, is it? And Ara? I think I said that right. Anyway, Libby, hi guys. How are you doing? We have still a lot going on and I've got some shipping updates to give to everybody as well. So we're just kind of hang out, wait for everyone to pop in. But and like do some shipping updates. Of course, tonight starts um, Nicole Spores Sal, which I am going to be doing. So I've got some things to show you there and we'll just get right into it. I'm going to go through some of my whips this week. Actually, yes, some finishes first. I've got a couple finishes to share that I'm pretty excited about, but nothing fully finished yet. And we're going to talk about what's going on and why. I seem to be in like some sort of um, shipping Bermuda Triangle right now. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of luck in the shipping arena. So let's go over and take a look at my whips for the week. And the first one that I've been working on is I started the triple play. Again, I still have the PDF that I'm working off of. But I started the Triple Play Summer Basket um, series for this. So this is by Hands On Design and Kathy Haberman, and she did a series called Triple Play Pillows. These are monthly. I'm working on summer. And the reason why I'm working on these is because tonight is the kickoff for Nicole's um, stitch along that she's working on to teach us how to make a Biscornu. So you can see... Kathy has directions to make them as these pillows, and Nicole is going to teach us how to do a biscornu. This is what a biscornu shape looks like. This was an item that Lynn, I don't, I don't know if you guys have met Lynn, but Lynn works here with me, and she did this one last year. So this is what we're going to be learning to make over at Nicole's right? And I'm pretty excited about it because I didn't get a chance to make it. So I really want to make sure I have mine done. So I got a little jump on it um, because, you know, my track record says that I need a head start. So <laughs> I got one of them finished and I'm, this was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this. And the red color in this is 321. I just love the way this red and this pink were working together. So I got one done and then I started, I have three pieces cut and what I'm stitching them on is 16 count um, Ada that is the color Driftwood from Fabrics by Stephanie. I've got a little start on this one now. So this one's finished. That's here. And now I'm doing this one. Um, I want to get to this one too. I want to do all three of them. And then I may just make one Biscornu with one on the top and one on the bottom and then flat finish the other one. I haven't decided. I'm just right now, I'm just in the middle of just getting them done, right? Get them done, get them done. So if you're interested in joining the sale in heaven already, these charts are, we do have some charts in our shop, but Kathy also has them all over at her, on her website and they're 
PDF because, like I said, I ran out of them. So I went and got myself a PDF. But that's the Summer Play, I mean, the Triple Play Summer Basket. And I've got the rest of mine going here. Scissors going on over here. We'll get that out of the way. And then, so that was one, I guess it's a finish, but it's still a whip too because I'll be working on it later this evening. And then the second one that I did was another PDF. And this I picked up from Fat Quarter Shop. It is a Robin Pickens piece. I have been really enjoying the um, idea of summer items, just something bright and colorful. And I did this one this week and got it finished. Now, I didn't have, I've been stitching a lot on linen lately. Um, but I didn't have any white linen and I tried some other things that I was working on and just um, decided that I really wanted it to be white. So I grabbed some 14 count pale gray gingham um, Ada out of my stash and just went to town and it was just a lot of fun and very bright, cheery, colorful. These, a lot of her charts are designed this way and have like all sorts of options that I think could be pulled out of there to make pillows and different things like that. So I was really excited to get this one done. The other one that I have done is the, the Robin from the bird series that she has. Now this is that Bermuda Triangle that I've been talking to you guys about or that I mentioned earlier, right? I ordered, I, I messed up and I ordered a fat quarter packet of Robin's um, thatched, I believe it's called thatched fabric so that I could fully finish these because I've got boards and ideas for them to fully finish them on. But I had some other addresses in my fat quarter shop. I don't know. If I, I had sent some things to Model Stitchers a while back and I had some other addresses in there and I clicked the wrong address. So I sent the whole fat quarter bundle to the wrong place. So it's not here. Like, yeah, like I said, it's just been like the Bermuda Triangle of shipping. Can you believe it? Has that ever happened to you guys? So this is still waiting for a full finish along with the Robin. And as soon as my fabric arrives, I'll be able to get that taken care of. But yes, Robin's um, charts are really, really fun. And just like I said, I just wanted, I'm just feeling very bright in summer in general. Like I went from spring and now I want to jump right into summer. I, I like bees and strawberries and things like that too. But for some reason, bright and cheery and colorful is really screaming at me right now. So I did that one and that's, yeah, those are the two I got finished. Then I got some whips happening and some different things because I'm also still working on some other pieces that are still in development. And I did have some things. So this, we're going to spin around a little bit here, do some shop updates. So with our shop updates currently right now, I haven't added anything new into the shop. I have things ready to go kind of, but not a hundred percent. So they haven't landed into the shop and Again, the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle thing. I'm also still waiting for stuff. So the paint order is delayed. The um, the keepers are not delayed. They're just, it's a, just a lot got ordered. And so the company is putting them all together and getting them out to us. And that is looking like, I think that I'm expecting a pallet to come for those because they're very heavy. So I'm working with the logistics of getting a pallet shipped here for all of the keepers so that those can go out. And the bags as well are out there in <laughs> in the land of crazy. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys. It was we just had a goof up. We had again, the wrong address was on a piece of paper and we sent some bags out to a different place and some of them came to It's just going all over the place, you guys. I'm just like it's crazy. But we're still working on things and since we have Orders that are shipping out are anything that does not have something that's still waiting in transit coming in. So Lynn is working very hard and going through all of the orders. And if it doesn't have like paint or the um, floss keepers, things like that, uh, those orders are all shipping out the door. The others are still in holding while we wait for those other items to arrive. So like I said, I'm just kind of over here. We're doing what we can and keeping going with the different things. I then also have some things that are still in development, but I'm going to show you those in just a minute because 
they're coming along pretty good and they should be ready pretty soon. We were talking about the um, little risers. The feet came in and they were the wrong feet. <laughs> I don't, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. So I had to reorder feet because um, we really like these chunky ones. The ones that came in were, they weren't as good. You know, they're just not as good. So we're still waiting on those. So these are still coming. I did not forget. I, of course, I want them myself. So they're still coming. And I know you guys, I'll be patient for it. So we'll get going on that. But some other, oh, I do have another finish. Let's go here. Um, I've got another finish here to discuss because it's also another one that I'm in limbo land on. So Lynn finished Liberty Pennies. I love it so much. She did it on Slate. It's absolutely stunning. If you have not picked up Liberty Pennies already from Hands, um, hands On Design, you know, grab it because it's insane and you're going to love stitching on it. I, you know, just a second. I want to take a look at this colorway here. Um, what is that red in there? Three fifty-two. I was thinking that red was looking a lot like the three twenty-one from the other, but it's not. So it's just so pretty, so vibrant. Now the plan for this one is we're gonna finish it using. This is in our basics collection, and it's just you know, really, it's just a basic round. So we've got in our basics collection we have um, square shapes, rectangular shapes, this round shape, and it's gonna fit very nicely on. You know, this piece is going to fit very nicely on there. The, um, the, of course, the delay on this one is on, it's on me, on my end. And I forgot to order the circles. So I've got circles on order. Like I said, I can't make it up, guys. It's just crazy pants. I've got circles on order from Kathy from Hands on Design because she has pre-cut circles for these and for the gather rounds. The gather rounds look like this. You can see the circle shapes are a little bit different. These are on our perpetual paddles. This pack comes in a three pack if you're interested in that. But the round boards that you fully finish these on, that the piece gets finished on, I guess I'm going to say the, um, she doesn't have press on board. It's a card, more of a chip, not really a chipboard either. What does she call it? Anyway, they're pre-cut rounds, right? She's got two sizes. She's got this size and she's got the size that go for these circles that she's doing. So I have those on order. I'll link it below um, so that you can run over to her shop too and get them because I ordered like three packs of them. So I had plenty of rounds in stock um, to get those going, but they're really inexpensive and uh, just a great, a great, um, extra to have on hand so that you've got those rounds. So the rounds are coming for that and Liberty Pennies will be finished next week and we'll get that going. And then some other things that I pulled out some whips because there's some a couple things I want to get finished up because I think they're going to look really cute um, staged in our new shaker box is this piece from Annie B's. And it is B Sweet. This is something that will be over on at Annie's, I believe. I'll find it and link it so you can go and get it. But this isn't this just the perfect one for this night? Like if you love bees and you love patriotic, this is your your piece right here. I mean, it's it's perfection. I started this is on Lugana. Um, so I'm also all over the place right now with what I'm stitching. I'm stitching linen, I'm stitching Lugana, I'm stitching Ada. It's all good. So we're all stitching all the things. And this piece I started last year and pulled it back out because yeah, I'm like, what's going on here? I'm almost done. You know, look at just a little bit. So I grabbed that out so I can get back to that because I think this is going to be a great piece also finished on um, perhaps one of our basic shapes as well in a rectangle shape and things like that so that we can... Um, Put that over here so I get that fully finished. And like I said, that could sit then within the new shelf that is our shaker shelf. Good grief. There we go. The mirror image thing on this stuff. Um, 
that is still in development, but I think I'm really close. So let me chat about this for just a minute while I hold this up for you. So we made one that is this size, and then I bumped it up a little bit, and well, then we bumped it up a lot, but that one was just way too big, so we're not going to be using that one. But this one, there's two sizes that I've got so far, and I will give you a lot more details about them. This one, here we go. This one has a four inch depth for the shelf. You can see how we've got that shelf in there. Um, lots of layers to this, very fun and easy to paint. What we worked on, and Brian was pretty diligent about it this week with getting it scaled so that it fit perfect, is one that has, hold please, er, <laughs> there, a six inch shelf. That's gonna give us more depth in the bottom. Oh my gosh, that's maybe this is better. Here, depth in the bottom for putting stuff. Oh, there we go. That's maybe easier for me. Um, because what I was noticing is, for instance, some of the, let's put this in here. With the four inch shelf, our little risers did not fit in there. However, with the six inch deep shelf, we can set risers in here as well. The other thing that will fit nicely with a six inch depth is if you wanted to add, okay, hold, you know, like an on the edge piece in there or other things, those were not fitting on the four inch shelf. That being said, the four inch shelf works really nice for hanging it this way and could be a really good option for even putting See, this is a shop talk, you guys. I just sit here and I brainstorm with you all and it's really fun. Um, with putting something right here, right? So this is a good, or hanging this direction. So I'm, I'm batting around the idea just adding both of them so that we have two depths. You just have to, you know, like keep an eye out on what depth you need for whatever you're putting in there. So you might want to work, you know, like keep that in mind, right? The other thing I did is just to play because I do a lot of playing with these things. On this one, these circles, they're layered so that you have, you know, like a little thing to hang bunting on, right? That one has one quarter inch spacer in there, bumping it up. And then when I put the bunting across because it fit just perfect, right? It didn't... I can't do it. It didn't fit in that spot. But if I take it now, so this is what I have to also decide on like what gets included with it. So I think we'll add extra little risers. If we use two quarter inch spacers in there, let me just do it this way first so I can see what I'm doing. Then our bunting piece rests on it just perfectly. So you can, you know, I mean, it's not, I guess it's not perfect, perfect. You don't want it to fall off, but still, it's going to rest up there. So if you wanted to grab the wooden bunting, you could get the wooden bunting to coordinate with your things that you fill in the bottom of e either size, either size shelf. So I'm thinking that's what we're going to do is add extra spacers. You can use them or not. You know, it'll just be in the box and keep in. So this is what I do all week. <laughs> so I sit around and I paint things and I glue things together and then I paint more things and I glue them together. And we play until we get it just right. And that one is really close to being just right. But like I said, since we're also still waiting for paints and keepers and things like that, I figured we're just going to hold for just a minute and then it'll be out. But I promise. Do you, you guys like it? You think both depths would be good? I kind of do too. We also batted around the idea of doing five inches, but, and then just one. But five inches wasn't quite deep enough and four inches, you know, like it's, it's working. I think it's working. The other thing that I went and bumped this, the six inches is because remember our tall, um, the Santa's trios for, um, Teresa Kogut's little Santa guys, they kind of, they fit in there too, if we use the six inch depth. So more is coming on the shaker, this shaker box shelf. Um, it's, it's on the way. Now, another whip that's in my we're just all over the place today, guys, right? Um, 
that's in my stash that is definitely time to get out and get busy with is hive rules. I'm sure, I don't even think it was last year I started. This might be a, the, a year ago, and this has just been lingering way too long. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have just, I don't have a lot of whips, but I do have some that are just, oops, I'll get that out of the way for you guys, lingering, and it's now starting to kind of bug me. So this is also on Lugana, and when I started this, I had picked up the Vicki Clayton silks, so this is what those silks look like. I grabbed the little container that you see here um, just from Walmart. And what I do is I take the, the little key code that comes with the silks and I tape it into the top and then I can keep the silks right into this little container and that goes in my bag. The bag I was using for this one and I had put this, look at this cute little, I don't even know where that came from, but I thought it was so cute. Um, is one from Dot Dot Goose Design, and these are just like fitting right in there too. So, but anyway, hive rules. We're talking hiss, and I, I've got to get back into it, get some pieces going, and get get busy on it. But we had talked a long time ago about a board for the rules, a rules ladder, if you will. And I've got one that is also still in, in development with the other shelf, but it's super, super close and I painted it up today. So I'm going to wheel back here and show you an overview of this piece. It's a nice tall ladder. I've got it painted in the black. Okay, here we go. Um, so we've got this piece and I just have it painted just basic, right? Basic black and distressed. Now, the way this piece works, especially for shipping, is it is a puzzle piece. So you would end up with two pieces with that puzzle hook. Ta-da! Um, that hooks them together. Then you'll also end up with pieces to stabilize it much like the other piece so that you can glue across the back and stabilize your puzzle section, right? So this is, I mean, I know that's looking really kind of boring and stuff, but I think it's going to be really nice, you know, once we get, it's just to the support piece, right, you guys? So it's like, it's going to be really nice once we get our rules things done for putting it on. Now, this is a generic size, so a lot of the rules are going to fit on there. Lynn has um, Christmas rules from, is it Christmas rules? I think so. From Lizzie Kate, she has it finished on 14 count and it fills this whole thing, but it's, it's gorgeous. She's working on one in red right now so that we can show that inspiration. Now, what I think we're going to do is maybe beef up this area here as well with some things for the back. I just want to make sure it's stable for you. Let me bring this in so you can see here, see the puzzle line. So you will have that line, but as you can see, I painted this one using black velvet from the DIY paint line, and it, it filled in really nice. What this is going to be, I think, really awesome for, too, is with for painting-wise, is doing some faux finish techniques with it, you know, like some texturizing and things like that. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that piece. It's really close. It's really close. I know you have asked about it, and it's, um, it's really another close one ready to get out there and get going. So, thank you. I'm glad you, you like the ladder. I think the ladder is going to be super helpful, and we're just going to love it. We're going to love it. Now, there's something else that you're going to laugh that I've been working on, because I, look at, look at what I started, you guys. So, I was feeling the need, I know I'm all over the board, right? All over the place, to get some things, you know, like I've got, whoops, Sorry, I've like unplugged myself. There we go. Does that help? Um, get some samplers at my house because I reworked a couple areas and, you know, like a lot of these things, I love the holiday things and the seasonal things and stuff, but I also want to get more things out that are every day. And I've always loved the notion of the heritage wall with the red samplers. And so I grabbed this um, chart from Hands Across the Sea 
that was a part of her wisdom box. And I, I, I got to tell you a story about this waist knot one. It cracked me up. I might even still have it over here. I decided to go ahead and get this stitched. And what I want to do is I think my mom's name is going to go in this one. And so I'm going to rechart these red samplers and just kind of keep these out um, so that I can start getting that wall going. So I, this is really, this is brand new to me. How many of you guys use these? Do you guys use this? I bet you do, don't you, Holly? Do you have one of the, this bar thing? Anyway, I picked it up when I was at a stitching shop out in Denver and I got it loaded up and I'm using Maple Bar 36 count because I had ordered some of their new colors from Cedar River Linen and really loved this. And the call for on this one was um, Tabby Cat. Uh, let me see. What color did they say? Probably should put glasses on. Whatever it was, I had it. Oh, um, just the ticket. That's what it was. Just the ticket from Tabby Cat. And I actually have it, but I have it kitted up for a different sampler that I want to do. So I didn't want to use it for this. But I compared this maple bar to the Just the Ticket. And oh my gosh, it was like so close. I love the colors together. So I decided to go ahead and put it in this frame and set it out so that I can just start putting like a thread in. Um, oh, how you don't have a scroll. Oh, they, they seem scared. I'm just holding on to this, but I, it is a little slower going because I'm doing, you know, one stitch it. I, a lot of times I do the sewing method when I stitch. And on this one, I'm going, you know, uh, in and out, in and out, whatever that method is. But anyway, um, and I'm just throwing a couple of red threads in, um, in the morning, a couple in the evening, but keeping it just like this. So anyway, it's something that I'm giving a try. I am using the color 321, the same color that was over in the summer basket and the, um, the maple bar from Seed Ribbon. I really like it. I think it's going to be fun to have. It's, you know, I'm going between Ada and Linen and all the different things and some bright and this is a little more classic. So it's just kind of one of those sit down, chill for a while. Um, I really like doing, I, maybe you do too. I really like doing these. I love these border things. I just love the lines and just the, I don't know, the repetitiveness of it all. So, and this was one that I noticed, you know, how sometimes they, um, you know, they're like the little girl went off over here and stuff. Well, this girl, she's got it all down. So, oh, Ara is saying that, um, a roll of frame by the things to replace the knob and make it easier on your hand. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Maybe I will look into that. I'm still just playing with it. I don't, know that I love it yet. Um, you know what I like about it? What I like about it is that it's like set up and I can just leave it there. So I don't have to like, I'm not taking the hoop on and off and things like that. So that's what I do like it. Um, poke and stab, April saying, yep, poke and stab. So I'm a poke and stabbing right now. But that was just kind of something. Yes, Maria, I do think that repetitive borders are just kind of relaxing that way. So that's something I've been working on and it'll be fun to show you how those progress and I'll just keep putting a little bit in at a time um, and going back and forth between different samplers and different things. Um, let me double check here. I think I've got everything. We're kind of a short thing this evening, um, mostly because it was mostly about updates for you with that. There are some things coming up that I've also been working on behind the scenes. So we've got some good things coming. This year is shaping up super fun. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, Ella, back to this waist, not why not. Okay, this is my story. Oh, hi, Amanda. Um, my story for this. So I was here like figuring like, okay, I just want to have a little red sampler going. I just want to have a, a moment to just kind of you know, go between the Ada and the linen and stuff and just put some stitches into it and just kind of enjoy that process, right? So I'm here looking for, like in the, in the studio and stuff, looking for something in my stash that I can use because I am i don't need to, or I got lots in my stash. So I'm looking in my stash. I'm like, this is going to be it. Love this. Super cute. I like the ones in the Words of Wisdom. It's going to be red. We're going that direction. And then I'm like, and I like that 321. And I actually think that's what they call for. Um, 
Yeah, 321 was the color that was called for in DMC. So I went over and I grabbed a new skein because I was running out anyway because I'd used it for, you know, the hands-on design summer basket one. And I grabbed a new skein of um, the 321. And I'm pulling it all out, you know, doing the thing to get it to put on the, the drop and everything. And I got it all knotted up. <laughs> and I went, nope. And I just tossed it on the table. And I left it there. And I'm like, no, get another one. We're not dealing with this. We are not dealing with knots and DMC and stuff. And then when I walked back by it, trust me, the irony of it was not lost on me with the fact that I threw a skein away so that when I was stitching the waist knot, want knot chart. Anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. I thought I'd share it with you. So there you go. There's the story time with Chantel this evening. But how many of you guys are getting ready to get over there to do the Biscorn News? I'm so excited. I think I'm going to stitch on those this evening and get back to that. And I also have updates on the, um, the, the file cabinet, okay? The file cabinet, yes, it's going funky, okay? Because that's just kind of also the mood I'm in right now. I've got all kinds of moods, all kinds of moods going on right now. I'm all over the place. So it's going funky with the file cabinet. And... I'll get started on that tomorrow. That's coming up with the next vlog. It might be a minute, but I'm going to get it going because I've also got a trip coming up next week with Alicia, the fanciful flamingo, and we are headed to Vegas. Now, yes, we're going to try to get um, at Stitcher's Paradise there. Is that right? Who has been there? Okay, we're going to hit that. But she and I are going there actually for a conference and we're going to learn all kinds of things. And I'm so excited. So I'll share them with you when we get back and we'll, of course, of course, film it and vlog it. So you want to head over also and follow Alicia, the fanciful flamingo. She is a TikToker as well, which I envy because I think that's kind of a fun little platform. So watch her on TikTok, watch her on YouTube and follow her on all the socials. I think you'll love it. She has a great, great sense of humor. And I will, I told her that there's, I, I should link it to you guys. You guys, you got to go over there and see. <laughs> She's going to kill me. Anyway, I, spit, I gave her a thousand views probably just on this one thing. She's got a TikTok on her thing of, it's a pool floaty flamingo incident. If you know, you know, get over to her channel and watch it because you will die. It is so funny. I'm just rambling. So I'm going to take off and I'll say goodnight to you guys. I've got a lot of work to do because I got to go put this stuff in the, in the description box still. I'm, you know, it's been a week. I've been lazy, but I didn't want to miss chatting with you guys this evening. So I popped in here so I could give you a few more updates. Do we have any questions? So, oh yes, Maria, won't well, that be so fun? I'm so excited for us too. And okay. It looks like uh, Amanda, with Starlight Stitching Company, she's getting excited for the Biscorn You Sell. Crafty Toad is headed over for the Biscorn You Sell. So many people headed to Biscorn You Sell. So, and if you don't know what one is, get over there tonight because um, there's a lot of possibilities with it. I was even looking at a lot of other ones that could be stitched up and made into those. So I'm kind of excited about having those in a bowl. So I'm going to sign off then and just thank you guys so much for joining me and hanging out. Um, I've, I'm not supposed to share it, but we also have a little bit of wildlife living here in the shop with us right now. So that'll be a story for another day. Bye guys.